Experts say a Kansas man put himself in a precarious legal position by donating sperm to a lesbian couple who didn't work with a doctor. Under Kansas law, a sperm donor isn't the father of a child if the doctor handles the artificial insemination, but the law doesn't specifically address the donor's obligations when no doctor is involved, so he may actually, William Murata is his name, he may actually ha- have to pay child support because now this lesbian couple has come back uh, three years, four years later and said, um, pay up. Now, we thought we'd find out a little bit more about how this is going to play out. Angela Giampolo is an LGBT lawyer and principal of Giampolo Law Group and founder of phillygaylawyer.com to talk about this. Angela, thank you for your time today. We sure appreciate you coming on. Absolutely. Thank you, Ernie. Thank you, Rachel, for having me on. You know, this, uh, this idea that somehow you're going to come back to the sperm donor and say you're responsible. Now, tell me, are there, are there legal precedents for this kind of thing happening? Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, there absolutely are. Um, There are cases in California, Maine, Vermont, Ohio, New Mexico, all where courts have uh, found, you know, against the sperm donor, if you will. But it's very, very important to note that the lesbian couple actually don't want Murata's money. They're not the ones who came back asking him personally for money. They fell on hard times. The breadwinner of the two lost her job because of a uh, medical illness that's undisclosed, and they needed state assistance. And when they contacted Kansas, Kansas is the big bad wolf here. When they contacted Kansas, Kansas is the one that said, all right, if we have to shell out $6,000 and there's a father out there, we want to know who that is and we want him to pay us back. Oh, okay. So it wasn't the couple that actually was going after this guy. No, the couple feel very upset about this. The couple actually wanted to go the IVF route. You mentioned the statute. They actually wanted to use a physician, and apparently a physician would not sign the proper documentation because as a lesbian couple, they, quote, quote, you know, quote, weren't fit to be a family. And then three years later, they go back to Kansas for state assistance, only $6,000. And the, the agency blew off the breadwinner of the two and said, I'm sorry, I don't even know why you're on the phone. Um, the only people I can speak to are the actual parents. And that oh, would be the birth mother and, and the sperm donor. Angel, is this a common problem that uh, same-sex couples are running into, even with artificial insemination, that uh, a doctor won't work with them because of, uh, because of their same-sex status, and then they, they go out, maybe they post an ad on Craigslist, and they do it uh, another way? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's unfortunate. I mean, one of the um, uh, good things about this case, you know, if you're going to turn lemons into lemonade, is that it's really taking an issue mainstream, uh, you mm-hmm. know, people around the country are outraged at, at what's happening to this couple um, that LGBT couples face on a daily basis. Um, you know, I wouldn't say in Portland or San Francisco, Philadelphia or New York, that many physicians, you know, uh, act like this or that families run into these issues. But ultimately, you know, not even talking about the physician, the laws themselves are outdated. So Kansas specifically, Their insemination law was enacted in 1994, but it's modeled after a 1973 law where social mores and medical technology is not what it was today. Um, Not to mention the fact that same-sex marriage is banned. It's not even that it's not allowed. It's constitutionally banned. So if you're a same-sex couple in Kansas, you have every strike against you. You know, you have a 1973 law that the the courts have to uh, abide by, and same-sex marriage is banned. Um, so, yeah, LGBT couples face this a lot. What's going to ultimately happen in this case, you think? Well, I just found out yesterday that uh, there was supposed to be a hearing today on a motion for summary judgment, basically the uh, Murata's lawyers trying to get this knocked out. And for scheduling purposes, quote-unquote, it was apparently postponed for four months. So what I think is going to happen is, you know, you have a woman here who wants to pay the $6,000, and for no reason Kansas is not taking her money. And I can't imagine the the court docket being so jammed up in Kansas that this needs to be postponed four months. So I think all of the notoriety around this case has really caused the agency to think twice. Um, And I think specifically this case may go away. And and then hopefully public policy change. Hopefully Kansas adopts the 2002 insemination laws. You know, I hope the legislature, legislature gets involved after this. But I personally, I think this case will go away. Would Mr. Murata end up, if it didn't, uh, would he end up having to pay until the child was 18? 
Well, again, see, the, the lesbian couple does not want his money. Right. So, so the state of, he would be forced to repay the 6000 but it's currently out. And by law, if this lesbian couple did want to go after him for child support, they could. But they're right. saying they have no desire to. But, yes, if this did not go away, the statute clearly states, you know, the black letter of the law is in favor of Kansas here. And Murata mm-hmm. would absolutely have to pay back the 6000 and anything that mm-hmm. the lesbian couple would, would want to go after him for. This is Angela Giampolo with us on America's Radio News. PhillyGayLawyer.com is the website. Thank you, Angela. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you, guys. Bye.